Thailand's path to democracy has been anything but smooth. The Southeast Asian country has had 25 elections in the past seven decades, but the elected government has been overthrown by the military 12 times. Thailand's latest political strife has been going on for more than a decade. It's defined by an urban-rural divide. It all began with this man. Thaksin Shinawat was ousted from power. The telecommunications billionaire became prime minister in 2001. He was hugely popular among farmers in the countryside and the working class in the cities because of sweeping reforms to tackle poverty like funding for healthcare and education. But Taksin's opponents were a group made up of royalists, ultra-nationalists and middle-class people who were mostly from the capital, Bangkok. They accused him of corruption and said he wasn't loyal enough to the monarchy. They dressed in yellow, the colour of the king, and held mass protests that paralysed the capital in 2006. That prompted the military to stage a coup while Taksin was abroad to oust him from power. Taksin went into self-imposed exile in Britain, but his supporters flooded the streets of Bangkok in protest. They became known as the Red Shirts. Since then, Thailand has seen a revolving door of prime ministers. Taksin's allies regrouped and won elections in 2007. Samak Sundaraved became prime minister, but he only lasted nine months in the job. His replacement, Taksin's brother-in-law, Samchai Wangsawat, only lasted four months. Their time in power was hampered by continued protests from the Yellow Shirts who even occupied the grounds of Government House in 2008. Some of Taksin's allies defected and formed a coalition with the opposition Democrat Party. Its leader, Abbasid Wajachiwa, was chosen as Prime Minister in December 2008. But the Red Shirts protested against his leadership, which sparked deadly clashes in Bangkok. Three years later, Taksin's allies came back to power when his sister Yingluck was elected as Prime Minister. But the Yellow Shirts staged demonstrations against what they said was Taksin's continued influence on Thai politics. Bangkok again became paralysed when Yellow and Red Shirts engaged in deadly clashes. Yingluck's time as Prime Minister was defined by an ill-fated attempt to strengthen rural support through a rice subsidy scheme. Farmers got a guaranteed price for their crops, but the scheme backfired when Thailand was left with a glut of unsold expensive rice. In 2014, the Constitutional Court removed Yingluck from power over the controversial transfer of a senior security officer back in 2011, a move her supporters said was politically motivated and an abuse of judicial power. Before new elections could be held, the military swooped in and staged another coup, placing General Prayachanal Chia in charge as Prime Minister. The hunter cracked down on dissent and public protest and has kept a tight lid on Thailand's political climate. The lengthy mourning period that followed the death of King Bumibon Adulladech in 2016 in October gave the military time to expand its authority. Thailand is due to have its first election in nearly five years, but the political divide remains. The Red Shirts are tired of having the military constantly overturning their victories, but the Yellow Shirts want to maintain a system where they can overrule the masses in the countryside. Thailand could finally be returning to democracy, but perhaps the bigger question is whether it can maintain stability.